Oracle Apex is an easy to learn developer tool that enables us to create a working application based on a database in Oracle and to do so very quickly. So we'll use Oracle Apex 424 in this video series for rapid application development. If you want to work along with the series and create forms and reports as the series progresses, there are scripts that will be used in the first few videos that create tables and populate those tables with data. Those scripts are available at the URL shown here. Some of you may be aware that I have a video series that I posted in 2012 using Apex 411. This series will use essentially the same scenario but it will show differences on in the APEX interface for 424. It will also add a little bit of coverage on the team development tool that's available in APEX. And it will also feature a little bit about the responsive design available in the newer releases of APEX. APEX 5 is due out in 2014. It's not clear at which point, at what point in 2014 it will be released, but I decided to go ahead and make this series now because it would probably be at least another year before I would try to incorporate the new version of Apex into my coursework. When I installed Oracle XE on the local machine, I upgraded the installed version of Apex to Apex 424. As a result, I need to go directly to the Apex screen to log in because I can't use the Start Browser uh, menu interface that you have when you install Oracle XE. It does not run because I've upgraded Apex. However, I normally would use SQL Developer to connect to the database and I would use this particular interface to work in Apex anyway. So you don't need this information out here. You just need to type in, for a local install, type in what you see there, and you would have this interface. Initially, you're going into a workspace called Internal under Administration or Admin. Internal is the workspace used for administering Apex itself. So you won't typically go into this workspace. But to get started, I will log in. I log in as the overall, the administrator of Apex overall, and I'm going to manage workspaces. Now I already have some users and I have a workspace, but I'm going to create a workspace and I'm going to call it the uh, Teams Tutorial and click Next. I have this navigation area that shows me where I am in the process. You can reuse an existing schema, and for my class purposes, I typically create the schemas and then attach the workspaces or install the workspaces in those schemas for my students. But I'll say no here and let Apex generate that. And so I'm going to call this Teams Tutorial and set my password. I will not use 100 megabytes. I'll go ahead and set it for uh, 25 and click Next. Then I create an administrator for that particular workspace. So I'm going to add a TT for Team Tutorial. And then you create the password. You can enter the name. You don't have to. You have to enter an email address. I actually fake this because I'm not using the email feature within Apex. So I'll fill this in, but pause the video. After I fill in the information, I click Next. I get this overview screen before I commit to creating the workspace. I'll click create and pause the video because it'll take it about 30 seconds to come back. I get this success screen and I can click done and then I can log out as the Apex administrator and log into that specific workspace. I, on my initial login, I have to change my password. I will change the password, go back, and log in again. So now I've logged in as the administrator, and I want to go immediately to administration. 
as the administrator of this workspace, I do not want to develop, do development. I want to create some developer accounts. So I'll go into Administration, Manage Users, and I will create a user. I will actually end up creating four developer accounts. But I'll start with Dev Jan and just uh, make up an email. The default schema is probably, in this case, is exactly what I want. I do want to change it to not a regular user, but a developer who has more access and more rights. I'll set the password, and I can change it to either have them change the password on login or not. So I'll go ahead and set the password, and then I will uh, create user. So I'm going to pause the video and create three other users because I want to have these accounts available as I work in the team development tool. So I've created all the user developer accounts and I will now log out and log back in as DevJan. And I'm now in Apex and ready to begin development. In the next video, I'll do an overview of the features, the tools here in Apex.